Now we pick up with a flashback to last week in which Henry took his own life after shooting Sam. In the game, you immediately cut to black after that, and I think they went back to this in the intro to mirror it in the show. It's all your fault! Henry! Henry, no! We also see some dead rabbits being taken in, and the winter chapter of the game started off with one hopping along before it was then shot by an arrow with Ellie. That's the cutest f***ing thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> and we also get a play on the scene from the game when Ellie tries to whistle. I'm learning how to whistle. You don't know how to whistle? Does it sound like I know how to whistle? Are you alright? I'm trying to learn how to whistle. You don't know how to whistle. Well, does it sound like I know how to whistle? They then come across the aforementioned Hydro Dam, which was a location you had to navigate to get past. Ellie couldn't swim, and you had to jump in the water and use a board to navigate her so she could build a bridge for you. On the other side of this, you came across a child's grave, and this was potentially played upon last week. Joel also says that Ellie's no Will Livingston, and this was the guy who wrote the amazing five-star reviewed pun book. Now Joel sees Tommy working on some scaffolding, and this changes things up from how it happens in the game. Don't even think about reaching for your weapon. Tell the girl to drop hers now. Ellie, do as the lady says. Tommy! We didn't know the place was occupied. We're just trying to make our way through. Through to where? They're all right. But you know these people? I know him. He's my goddamn brother. Tommy. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> How you doing, baby brother? We kind of combine the guns being drawn and Tommy being amongst them, whereas in the show we get the riders and then them taking them in. Tommy and Maria announce they're married and it kind of calls back to this moment from the game. Maria is family, actually. Oh shit, congrats. Ma'am, thanks for not blowing my head off. Would have been embarrassing, considering you're my brother-in-law. We all gotta get wrangled up at some point. And we get some stuff that pulls from the game. It doesn't seem like you age much. You, on the other hand. Let me look at you. You get fucking old. Easy. It won't happen to you, too. And the kid? Oh, yeah. She's the daughter of some firefly muckety muck. The girl must be important. What is the deal with you? Some big wig's daughter or something? So you know where they might be, these fireflies? Why bring her here? I was supposed to deliver to the fireflies. The way I figure they're your boys, you finish the job, you collect the whole damn payment. I haven't seen a firefly in years. You know, they got a base down at the University of Eastern Colorado. It's uh, a week's ride south. What makes you think I'd do this for you? This isn't for me, Tommy. This is for your damn cause. My cause is my family now. You ain't talking about some walk in the park here. Jesus, boy. Have Maria get some of your born-again friends to do it. They got families, too. Maria's a few months along now. So I just gotta be more careful. Now, we've often talked about how Joel pushes things to the back of his mind so he doesn't have to face the truth or inflict pain on others. In the game, he refused to tell Bill that Tessa died and even kept up the lie that she was back in Boston. <laughs> what kind of trouble are you in? Where the hell's Tess? It's just a job. S simple drop off. I didn't mean to take care of that. Relax. So, you didn't answer my question about Tess. Yeah, I thought the two of you were inseparable. She's busy. Yeah, sure. Busy. Sounds like there might be trouble in paradise. Oh, yeah, gosh. something like that. He does the same thing here and pretends that everything's all good with her. So, how's Tess? She's fine. I think he does this because talking about her death means that he has to acknowledge it happened, and with this brings the pain of their loss and also the feeling that he's failed. 
Now, we really see the difference between Tommy and John at this point when they discuss what they had to do to survive. They're very protective of this place. If a good fucking reason. I mean, folks find out we're up here. No, I heard. Wrong people might show up. So is that what I am? Am I the wrong people? This is how you're going to repay me, huh? Repay you? For all those goddamn years I took care of us. Those those things I did, Tommy, those things that you judged me for. I did those things to keep us alive. We did those things. Took care. That's what you call it? I got nothing but nightmares from those years. You survived because of me. It wasn't worth it. They weren't things. We murdered people. I bring you the cure from mankind, and you want to play the pissy little brother. And I don't judge you for it. We survived the only way we knew how. But there were other ways. We ain't back in Boston. You lay your hands on me again, it won't end well for you. Go grab some supplies and be out of your hair in the morning. Tommy sees it as murdering people, whereas Joel sees it as being something that he had to do to survive. That's how they're talking the game, surviving. Tommy brings him some new boots and apologises for going off before, which is when they launch into a really deep moment. This pulls somewhat from the game, and in that they kind of combine the boss scene with what we get here. She's immune. Immune to what? What? Ellie. She got infected, but she didn't get sick. Oh, come her, on. I know I've seen her breathe enough spores to take down a dozen men. And nothing. Now, I wouldn't have believed it neither. But I can show you. I saw her get bit myself. That was months ago. Months. She's in me. All right. I'll bite. Why bring her here? From the beginning. I'm supposed to deliver to the fireflies. The way I figure they're your boys. You finish the job, you collect the whole damn payment. I haven't seen a firefly in years. But you know where they are. It was Marlene. She hired us to smuggle her to some fireflies. What makes you think I'd do this for you? You want me to take her? I'm just gonna get her killed, I know it. I'll take that girl of yours to the fireflies. You don't have to worry about it. I'll take her out at dawn. best this way. Well, maybe some real good will come of this. Now in the game when Ellie ran off, you had a bit where you followed her horse tracks until you found her holed up in a house. On the way you fought some raiders, just to vary the moments up because, you know, after all, you are playing a game. Now once you killed them and the raiders in the house, you got a scene in which Joel had a heart to heart in an upstairs bedroom, like what happens here. They just kind of combined the locations to make the bedroom Ellie's bedroom and like I keep saying Jackson was in the first game so this house this house scene couldn't have happened it couldn't have happened at the dam Is this really all they had to worry about? Is this really all they had to worry about? Boys movies Deciding which shirt goes with which skirt. Boys, movies, deciding which shirt goes with which skirt. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. Tommy knows this area. Oh, better fuck than... that. Well, I'm sorry. I trust him better than I trust myself. Stop with the bullshit. I made this decision for your own good. You'll be way better off with Tommy. Oh. What? Maria told me about Sarah. Ellie? And you are treading on some mighty thin ice here. I'm not her, you know. Maria told me about Sarah and... No. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel. But I have lost people, too. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel. But I have lost people, too. You have no idea what loss is. You have no idea what loss is. Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everybody I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. Everybody fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. So don't tell me that I'd be safer. 
safe with somebody else because the truth is, I would just be more scared. You're right. You're not my daughter. You're right. You're not my daughter. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. And we are going our separate ways. Get it together. We're not alone. Now come down. We're going our separate ways. And if I say no? Do you even realize what your life means? Listen, uh, Why are you here? I came here to talk to you. No, why are you still here? Well, I guess we're both disappointed with each other then. What do you want from me? Admit that you wanted to get rid of me the whole time. Now they say their goodbyes, which takes us into the university section. This too pulled from the game, and it was at this point that we learned more about Joel's past in which he wanted to be a singer. This too is reflected in the scene when they arrive. Well, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a singer. <laughs> Shut up. Why is that funny? About you. What do you want to be? Right when I was a kid, I used to want to be uh, a singer. <laughs> Shut up. No, serious. Sing something. Uh, no. Come on, I won't laugh. I don't think so. Joel, please. You gotta sing something now. No. Come on, man, I'm not gonna laugh. You're already laughing. Yeah, okay, Joel. Anyway, they reach the University of Eastern Colorado, and Ellie points out the mascot like what we get in the game. The big horns. What does that mean? Team mascot. That's a giant ram. You guys were like some idol worshippers. <laughs> when it came to sports, hell yeah. They also come across some monkeys, like what we see in the episode. Are those monkeys? Must be from the old labs. <laughs> Look at them go. Aw, are those monkeys? Yeah, a whole mess of them. Now firstly, Joel and Ellie enter a main hallway, and this looks similar to where Joel collapsed in the game, in that you were ambushed by bandits and he was impaled by some rebar after wrestling with one and falling off a balcony. Joel and Ellie find a list, and this is similar to the ones you'd come across in the game when visiting the area. I did actually wonder whether this university was the one they modelled the game after, as the environments are so similar down to the staircase in the rooms. They also bring across the moment in which you think the infected might be inside, and this is revealed to just be some monkeys. Jesus. Now here they find a map with the location St. Mary's on it. This shows where the fireflies have moved to, but it's interrupted by some raiders who arrive at the location. The attacker brings a baseball bat with him, which is a weapon you'd often use in the game. Joel strangles him and breaks his neck, which is also a move you could pull off when you grab people in this position. Nice little detail is that Ellie has her gun drawn here and is ready to shoot the guy like how she did with Brian. The pair make it out, but Joel ends up falling off the horse, which ends the episode like how this chapter does in the game. Joel's worst fear has come true, and he's now left Ellie in a very vulnerable position. Now at this point, we hear an acoustic version of the song, Never Let Me Down Again. If you cast your mind back to episode 1, then you might remember that we heard the Depeche Mode version of the song playing over the radio at the end. This spelled danger, and it's very much bringing the first time they set out full circle with this one. The song was about taking a ride with a friend that ended up letting them down, which is of course reflected in Joel here. If you want some else to watch, make sure you check out one of our breakdowns on screen right now. Got a good one, probably, might do, it might be rubbish, but yeah, definitely head over there right after this. By the way, thanks for sitting through the video, I've been Paul, I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.